and welcome to another edition of Inside the Vault with Nick Bereshef, President and CEO of Bullion Management Group and author of $10,000 Gold, Why Gold's Inevitable Rise is the Investor's Safe Haven. Each week, our viewers and Bullion Buzz readers submit questions for Nick to answer here on Inside the Vault. Today's question comes from Janice in Cochrane, Alberta. Janice writes, what are the implications of the recent announcement of negative interest rates in Canada? Well, first of all, it's important to put that into context. So, first of all, the Canadian economy has weakened uh, in 2014. The GDP is down 2.8%. The Toronto Stock Exchange is down 13.2% in 2015, but it's down 17.8% from its April 2015 high. The Canadian dollar is also down. It's down 8.8% in 2015 alone, but it's down 28% from its peak in 2011. So, so the Canadian economy has weakened just the same as many other commodity exporting countries like Brazil, South Africa, and Australia. And the Canadian economy is particularly dependent on natural resources such as oil and natural gas. Now, although we've had s some problems already with the oil price dropping to, to below $40, many Canadian companies were hedged to the end of 2015. After that, they will suffer major declines in revenues after 2016, and likely there will be defaults and bankruptcies, and that could create a domino effect. So the issue of, of negative interest rates is a real possibility in the context of that background. Now this is already being done, it's not something new. Switzerland and, and Sweden, and also the ECB, already have negative rates. The implications of negative rates are particularly devastating to savers and people on fixed income. Now, the, apart from negative interest rates, there's also the additional risk of bail-ins. Now, the bail-in provisions have already been passed in the last federal budget in Canada, and they, they have been passed in many Western countries around the world. Now, this would allow the, the government to implement bail-ins during a financial crisis instead of a bailout, as happened in 2008. So for example, in Cyprus, bank deposits that were in excess of the insured amount of 100,000 euros were converted to capital in the Cyprus banks. So that's the implications of, of a bail-in provision, um, and, and that adds to the, uh, to the risks of a negative interest rate. And how will this impact the gold price? Now in 2015, gold is up 7% in Canadian dollars. And this is a similar case in many other countries. It's only the US dollar that the gold has been weak in. Now when you get to negative interest rates, there'll be no lost opportunity cost in holding gold versus fixed income. And as an example, gold kept rising in the 1970s as interest rates together with inflation and only was stopped when the real interest rate became positive in 1980 when the Fed chairman at the time, Paul Volcker, raised rates to 18 percent. I think we're heading in, in a similar situation and uh, in today's market, 18% is completely unsustainable um, and it, it's going to be a very long time before we get to any kind of real interest rates and as a result, gold should benefit during this period. Thank you, Nick, and thank you as always to our viewers for tuning in to Inside the Vault. If you have a question for Nick, you can submit it to info at bmgbullion.com. And if you want to feel like a market insider, subscribe to our popular e-newsletter, The Bullion Buzz. In it, you'll find a quick snapshot of must-read news pertaining to the markets and precious metals, our contests, video of the week, chart of the week, and more. Thanks for watching.